The tiny state of Manipur gives India two kinds of workers in disproportionate numbers. The first is soldiers, the second, perhaps more celebrated, athletes. The state produces elite athletes across sports and disciplines, but no sport is as present everywhere as football. In March 2023, India's senior men's national team played two internationals in Imphal. It was the first time the state hosted these home games. Six players in that team were from the state of roughly 3.5 million. The matches and the final round of the Miss India beauty pageant that was held soon after were very much part of the double-engine BJP government's narrative of normalization and mainstreaming in the border state where identity politics reigns and every community, including, of course, the state, is armed. Local leadership made every effort to maximize the PR value of these events and the rapid strides Manipur was making under Chief Minister N. Biren Singh towards peace and development. On May 3, that narrative was violently altered. But even back in March, the chasm between investment in Imphal and any of the hill areas was wide. It is as clear in sport as anything else. The city boasts a sport university, sprawling sports authority of India, centres of excellence, a games village, hundreds of football pitches and turfs, coaches, academies, in addition to the best schools, colleges and hospitals. As the major population centre, some of this is expected, but the degree of difference, particularly when it comes to government infrastructure projects, is glaring. As a result, most of the Manipuris the rest of India knows come from Imphal. When India beat the Kyrgyz team in front of a capacity crowd of about 30,000 at the Kuman Lampa, Pinglan Sana Singh was among the six Manipuris who celebrated in front of the home crowd. His story is a little different. Though a Maitai, the dominant community in Manipur, he is from a small subset born and raised in the hill districts. His home, like his mother's before him, was Chura Chandpur. From there, he made it to the Tata Football Academy in Jamshedpur, before graduating and playing for clubs in the country's top-tier league. A regular at Hyderabad FC since 2020, the central defender's consistent form was noticed by the head coach, earning Sana a dream debut for the national team at 24. Neither he nor the myriad politicians cashing in on the photo op, nor those of us watching from the galleries that day had any inkling that in a little over two months, he would be forced to drop out of the team as it prepared for the SAFF Championship or that he would be homeless. But by May 5, almost every last Kuki in Imphal had been forcibly evicted from their homes. To the families of footballers like Simon Landunga, Semboy Hoikip, and hundreds of young boys and girls training at various schools, the city was completely off limits. That was when Sana's home came under attack. We met the family in Bishnupur. They found refuge just across the border at the home of another pro footballer, Okulan Kerala defender, Salam Ranjan Singh. It is just 35 kilometers away, barely an hour's drive on one of the best roads in the region. But for Sana's family, it might as well be a different planet. Their testimony reflects how deep the divide in Manipur has become and how even those who want to live in a cosmopolitan India, in peace and brotherhood, find themselves forced onto a side. On the third night, uh, there was a rally which was called Peace Rally, and it started missing. It broke out into a kind of, uh, they started attacking the houses and started burning down the houses where our family was in our own house, and a lot of other locality came into our house, and they were there, uh, and they waited until uh, the next morning to give a credit from there by the army. Uh, then Titan. Yeah, they, they came to the camp in Moirang, relief camp in Moirang, stayed there for a few days, and this incident was very surprising to every one of us. Uh, the third night was very difficult because of the violence and the threat that it poses at that time. Was in an frightening and very scary. I wasn't part of, but I was on the call with my mom, and you know, I, I myself thought that any moment they could. Uh, attack the house, burn the house, or, you know, shoot, uh, shoot and uh, all these things. So, yeah, it, it was very scary for all of us. And, yeah, that's what mom meant to say. And tell us a little bit about uh, the place itself, the locality. Uh, what was the kind of, uh, you know, how many uh, Mete families, how many other families, Cookie, other tribals were, and how long had 
your family been uh, in that place? Also, how was your relationship with the locals and the tribals? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, I have a lot of players, uh, friends, and people whom I know from the tribal uh, community that we train and we grew up together, tattered friends as well. Uh, so, we were born and brought up there. My mom herself had born, was born and brought up there. So, our entire family was uh, born in uh, Chitampur. And we have our home. Everything that we have is in jail. Anna was there from 1942. Yeah. That's what mom was telling me. Yeah. So, we coexisted very peacefully. Uh, you know, there was nothing such as tribals and metes. And, you know, it was the, we were the minorities there. But we never felt threat or we never felt uh, out of this. But this incident was very, as we said, my mom, and every one of them, they thought like it was just a peace rally on the third. Nothing. And hence, uh, we were not going to be better. You know, we, nobody knew about this. So everything. You never imagined. They couldn't, yeah, something like this happened. This, uh, that they would attack the house or burn the house or things like that. That didn't, uh, nobody thought. And. We didn't take anything out of the house, thinking that the house wouldn't be born, it'll be protected. Even on the fort, yeah. we thought like nothing will happen. So she just locked the house. house. And then we took the key. The key is still with us. We thought like nothing will happen to the house. We thought like after two, three days, we can come back and stay there again. They'll be peaceful. In yeah. Just for like two, three days more open yeah. Because we don't think they didn't be happen like this. Like we are very friendly with them. Well, they are like my relatives. You know, sound bad because we stayed there. We don't know the people from the outside. We will know the people from Trinchapur truly. So we don't thought that they would, might do this That's thing. Right. So around us, so when the first sort of people came to attack your own Tirtha, did you recognize them? Were they the same people that you have grown up with, or were they people from outside? You can't be recognized exactly because it was, it was dumb because they've cut down the uh, cut down the light. So we can't see their face or like properly. They just know that we, they are coming towards us. That's what we know. But we can't see their face or nothing. The but light has been cut down because it was dark. And we were inside, inside the room also. Yeah. Because we can't come out. You were sort of the same you were sensed in that time. See, at that time, what we did, it was like, we have some license again. Double barrel, those license again, not automatic. Mm -hmm. uh, so we took that gun, like around 10, 10, 15, yes, 10, 10 to 15, 15 of the five. villagers. Mm. They came out, they didn't shoot to kill. It was like just to defend. Mm. Like double barrel, how can we shoot more? Just to, mm. so we were like to just scare. to defend. Yeah, just yes, to scare. So just to that one. But then they, they have for those automatic. They fired like broom, broom, like that. For us like, dang, dang, that's it. We don't know if we are killing them or not, but we are just to defend them. I mean, defend us. That's no such, uh, no such information was given to us that like this thing is going to happen. You guys need to evacuate. Nothing was there. No message. No information. That night, uh, I think like we called up the police. The it was like, but then like they said, yeah, you are sending a security, but there was no security at all. Nothing. Nothing. There was like. When we called up the police, uh, the senior headquarters, everything, mm -hmm. but they said like, ah, oh, we're sending the uh, police it's security. No need to worry, but we're sending it, we're sending it, no need to worry. Through phone, through, through, message, phone, through message, there was happening like around one to two hours. Mm -hmm. But we kept on sending the message, we kept on calling them. They told no, we are, we are ready to support you. No, we're going to send the security, don't need to worry, don't need to fire. I think everything will be distinct. If I'm not mistaken, mom, you guys called up the... Even the local leader will call up. Boys, Mrs. Even he told us, the MLA itself told us, no need to scare. We are there for you. I have called up the security. I have talked to the ASP. They are sending the security for you. They guard you and all. That's it. Before the rally uh, on the third, yeah. the big rally, uh, or even after the rally, the, the DC then removed the curfew and Many of the security courses were sent back to Infar. All of that also also happened, right? So, uh, do you think that uh, the state was completely unprepared for what was about to happen? See, on the... When was it that the... Uh, the uh, CMR first, incident, first incident was happened on 27, I think. Yeah. 
and then the trucks came back so they waited for the second trip and while waiting uh, there was stone pelted with them you know that's what I, I've been told uh, stone pelting and things like that and they were gathered around in a place new with our bus parking and from there the trucks uh, took them to and took them to the relief camps and once they reached uh, the relief camp uh, it was a chaos of course you know, nobody was prepared for this. So even they were kind enough to arrange uh, food for them and everything. But who were left back and who were uh, stranded behind, uh, I think what I heard from them is that their food were served on a, on a paper, on a banana, you know, that... Banana? Yeah, and... No different that, banana leaf, what we call yeah. banana, those... The steam. Cover. Yeah, steam. They cut the stick and the cover, the steam. On that day, they, they had, the, and it was a, a kind of like small portion of rice with some dal, you know, and very basic to serve. We have those oh, pictures also. Pictures of video and, and very, you know, they could eat like, you know, they pull like this. You could see the rice and the dal running side by side. Right? Yeah. And they have to wash and keep it so that they, they can eat the next meal again. Yeah. And a few videos I've seen that drinking water condition were so bad. I mean, you wouldn't like to wash your face with that, or you even you know have a shower with that water. Well, they they drank that water to stay alive, and it's, yeah, so that was what everyone went through. To add to this one, uh, I have a small boy. He's just one and a half year old. My my son, uh, my wife. They were on uh, you know like was truck which were fully covered. There was no air to pass and they were all suffocated. So like they suffered all those things and then on top they like they they pelted stones. They thought like oh we're gonna die. That is what in their mind you go so and me. And when they reached the safe point they thought like, oh we're gonna be alive. Is nah. it that must have been also a mixed kind of feeling, right? Because you clearly have uh, like everyone does an emotional attachment with your home being uh, you know and for before India became India you know, when you live in there yeah. uh, so coming from there that time what were your first thoughts did you still think okay it was bad but we get to go back home one day and rebuild and start again well feelings well uh Sometimes at the end of the day, they remember. Yeah, as as you said, to really mentioned that we have like a task name because we're born and brought up there, so we of course want to go back and live there. But even the circumstances, like if we felt threat, if uh, there's no security available for us for the minorities, because we will be minority there for sure. And so as for them, and coming back, being far and living, you know, for them, it's it's all going to be difficult. It's the People above or who doesn't take care, like you know, the state force has to be there in, for any emergency or any, any anything, any such things. If that is a sword, then I think the people will have faith to go back there and live. If not, I, I think nobody will, yeah, because it's, it's a matter of life and death. It's like we they felt like they escaped that when they arrived at the Rindic camp. So for them to go back and to live personally, they very difficult. Until the government, uh, you know, sets up the good uh, force and stations uh, to protect, protect the people. Peace. So, yeah, that's the thing. And talking about attachment, brother, whatever we have had until now as a family, memories, our childhood memories, you know, from small things to everything. So it's all there. And we don't have a second home in Manipur. Be it Moiran, be it Infal, we had no plans uh, because... Everything we set up was all in Chuchanpur. So my mom, uh, she's the one who really loves this district so much that even though we are able to, like buy land, we fall into the house, but we wanted to live in Chuchanpur because we're so attached we love the, and the place so much. Mm. I myself do. Uh, hence, I set up the football turf, which got destroyed. He was unfortunate and well. I had big plans, you know, for the upcoming players and all the academies and uh, we do exhaustion programs and everything to, to give them a chance in uh, football. Because I know for sure that if, if the boy plays football at a high level in India, the family, everyone, life changes. 
So like it has, like it has for me and for many of us. So with that thought, I, I, I had big plans, you know, because there are a lot of tribal talented footballers who are from very bad backgrounds because their families are uh, coming support uh, them, you know. Well, I wanted to support them, uh, vice versa, you know, be it Maites, be it Fangman, be it uh, Tribunes, be it anyone. Uh, because our sports football doesn't happen here, uh, really, you know, really a cast or anything. Uh, it's, uh, it's their talent and it's their, uh, that will get them uh, what they deserve to. I just wanted to provide that platform. That's the reason I built a football ground, not because I have money or anything. I, what I earned through my footballing career, I invested on building that golf. Between three leaves, that got destroyed. Now, what do I do? I mean, you know, so I need to restart again and I have to give confidence to my family to be there for them. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very difficult decision for me to miss out on the national team periods because that is what every player wants to serve the country and play. From many seniors uh, uh, have uh, called me up and told me, like, you should go for the game and things like that. It was a very hard decision. Because at that point of time, I had to be a son. I had to be a brother. Well, so that's what I thought. I, my family missed me the most at that point of time. Well, for India, there are the many players who can play for India. And for my family, Hanbi, they go to. It's only me. So that's why I decided to be them and throughout this time. And I thought, like, uh, things will get better. Uh, you will know what's the ambition, what's the situation, and we can uh, go back and restart again, rebuild again. But until now, that's not the case. Uh, it's really not getting better. So it's difficult, but we need to have a plan now. So I want to build a family house in Moira, and so we can live there for some time and see what's the situation, which is something, and going forward, that the plans. But coming back to what your question no, was like, uh, everything that we ever had, even my uh, winning medals of the Indom Super League, South Cup, uh, whatever I've won from my academy days to until now, it's all been uh, destroyed, burned, and taken away. Uh, what I do is that a uh, few jerseys and things like that were on the floor in my room, and people have taken that away. And, and well, Yes, it's that other thing that will not come back. I can't buy them, you know. So those are the memories and what we earned through our mm -hmm. uh, sporting merit. Just gone. But really saddening. And, uh, but I have to import it, you know, what to do around and well, Yeah. Good. You don't you work like changing because of the sport. Uh, it also gives you access, like we said access to the MNA, access to really senior police and all that. And still it was so this is it for your family. What was it like for just normal people, uh, other people in the community who don't have that kind of thought? Or start to pick up your phone and call somebody. To very difficult. Uh, yeah. That, uh, well, the sink. Auntie? No, ma. I love it. Yeah, I thought. Maybe even uh, scarred by this and you have been of all the general economic condition, like how the which condition are enabled, like what do they do mostly? Uh, I mean, you know, what's uh, well in our locality, uh, there are many people that earn daily unable uh, daily wages and mm -hmm. they earn their living on a daily basis. And imagine Manipur, we as a state, as a, like you know, we. I think I have not seen many beggars, be it at any traffic or any other side. That's because people want to walk on and rest of the lives, you know, where there is a small hut, a small house. Mm -hmm. That's what people do. Now, in this situation, right, many people are homeless, jobless. They're in lift camps. What do they do? How do they earn their living, you know? It's difficult. How long does the people who are supporting support? So in our locality, how we live was like that. Uh, there are a few people who are businessmen and who, I, don't know, I myself went into sports. So there were a few like that. Otherwise, everyone was earning their daily wages. Where all that was taken away, I'm wondering how are they surviving now? You know, the total thing and process. And what is our government doing at this moment to 
we talk to them or support them or what is the solution, you know? I'm sure everyone is in the, are doing their level best to get things back to normalcy, but each passing day is making so difficult. Even for us, imagine one of them, how they might be surviving. Yeah, again, my sister. My sister, may I do? My our husband, our husband passed away just this December. This is just last December. 22 December. And she was saying to, you know, the cover, forget all those, my husband passed away, you know. And this incident happened. Yeah. And look, her house has been burned down, all destroyed, anything like, whatever they have. I mean, like the husband, no, like, he'll come and decorate, like, ah, this is not good. This is good for the house. Decorate everything, and then, like, husband passed away. And, like, she's trying to forget all those things, and then, like, suddenly this thing happened. Now she's, like, in that trauma, like, what will happen next? For she, when she's, now she's still with us, but she still has that pain in her heart, you know, my husband passed away and then told her like this thing in my house has been burned down. What will I do next? What will happen next? Queen is one as well as a mom of a I don't know. Oh, no. oh. Mom like my sister, they you know work so hard. We have a hotel we we earn and with our sweat. You know, like we earn from some other place in you know? At no, may not karke, thora thora jama karke ghar banaya. That's how we build the house, and like it has been destroyed in seconds like that. So we feel so you no know, like, are itna kama ke itna thora sa bana liya, wo bhi khatam kar liya. That that's what mom like and my sister. The you know the pain is still there. 